Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Court Farms with me, see what he here in Farming Simulator 22. I have finished the seeding contract on field 13. I have now got paid for the seeding contract on field 13. Nice port vein contract there for Diana. Um, going to take a quick trip back to the farm. There's a couple of fertilizing contracts, which would be nice to do. A couple of plowing, some more sowing jobs. Field two with Panola. Seven grand. Field 74 with we out. Um, what field am I on now? Currently I'm on field seven. Any jobs on field seven? Uh, fertilizing. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll go and see. Um, right. Let's see if I can get back to my farm a little bit easier going this way today. I'm hoping so. Although the mud, muddy tracks get a little bit harder. Oh, clearly we've got a field there with some very bad field definitions. Field definitions, for those of you wondering, is the term used to describe what map authors have to place in Giant's editor when they're making their maps to define the actual size of the fields in the map and make sure that um, the AI knows what size the fields are and where the field edges are and the boundaries and everything. If they don't do that correctly, you end up with what you see there, where the AI only works part of the field. I do have sympathy for the map authors and mod authors because um, the, the, the method for actually putting field definitions on a map is not easy. You have to place all these little parallelograms on the field. And if your fields aren't, you know, perfectly square and rectangles, that takes hours to do. Hours. Um, I know a map author friend of mine has come up with a little script and a little tool that allows him to paint field definitions in Giants Editor. I don't know whether that's widely shared with other map authors or is available to other people. But yes, we come back to the farm. The reason I'm coming back to the farm is, although I said in the last video I would like to do some contracts and stuff today for the, this month, I've also got to establish um, and set up. Excuse me. That we need. Um. To also um, do fertilizing of our own field. So, right, I need to put this stuff back in to the shed. Um, I should have washed it. But as yet, I still do not have a power washer yet. I've not invested in one. I've not purchased one. So, for the time being... We will just have to also going ahead with what I said in the last video as well. I'm going to separate my cultivator from my cedar. That should make life a little bit easier. Right, turn the lights off. Right, let's go find my other tractor. Wherever I left it. Uh, not in there. Is it over by the grass field, perhaps? Yep. 
Yeah. We'll use this one for fertilising today. Uh, we will repair it. And we will put some fuel in it as it requires it. So again, we'll go and get all that bit done. But then we're going to go fertilising. We're going to fertilise my fields. Because I need to make sure we do that. Because I'm not convinced that these are these these machines have got prop friendly um, tires. <laughs> Neither of my tractors have got prop friendly wheels on them, so I need to make sure we fertilise them in the first growth stage. Uh, repair that. Repair that. So I'm already spending most of that contract money that I've just made on servicing vehicles Good. refuel her right then we need to go get the fertilizer spreader And of course, some bozos just left a John Deere tractor in the way. sensors on in a second when we get to our field uh, we'll start with the ones over here Turn on crop sensor. There we go. Crop sensor is on. Now we've also got in that top left window nitrogen mineral application. Okay. And it gives you a lovely little line showing you where the current value is and where you need to be. Now, again, you can do this via manual application. via obviously automatic application i'm gonna leave it on automatic because it will adjust the rate of fertilizer it's putting on the field based on the actual values it's detecting underneath but yeah we just give this field a quick once round um show you in the precision farming map if we go to nitrogen our field is changing from red to orange as we get the right amount of nitrogen applied for the crop we need now because we've not done any previous um fertilizing of this field we've not done any slurry we've not done any manure or anything like that prior to seeding 
we are literally having to raise the nitrogen value from absolute rock bottom, lowest, to what is needed for the crop. So on this particular um, fertilizing task, and for the next couple of fields that I do, we'll be using rather a lot of fertilizer. We will be using a lot. Um, because it's got to use all the chemical fertilizer to make up the missing nitrogen. Whereas, uh, like I say, when you use other sources or you fertilize after harvesting, etc., it does decrease the amount of fertilizer you need to use. Because you'll already be at a, a, a sort of a base level, a good base level. Especially if you're using manure and slurry as your um, fertilizer. Your preceding fertilizer, if you like. And the great thing about this is it'll automatically turn off the fertilizer safe fertilizer on areas of field that you do not need to uh, fertilizing on Now, you guys can't see it because obviously the webcam is in the way. But as I'm going up and down this field, I can actually see on the minimap how the fertilizer is changing. So I can actually see where I fertilized and where I still need to fertilize, which is such a great feature. I wish it was in the base game of Farm Sim and not just something that's only available if you choose to use um, precision farming hopefully giants if you're listening you'll you'll add this mini map active mini map um, to future versions of the game so now we're doing our barley and our barley seems to require more fertilizer than our canola. So different crops with precision farming have different requirements for nitrogen. So some will use require more fertilizer than others. And as I mentioned in my sort of intro video for the series, and when I first started talking about precision farming, some crops don't use nitrogen at all but they actually increase the nitrogen value of the soil which means that they actually put fertilizer into the ground so you don't want to be trying to fertilize them and put in additional fertilizer on the field because they're going to do it and again knowing which crops actually add to the fertilizer state of the field and increase the nitrogen levels of the soil can actually be very useful to you again when you're first starting out wanting to save a little bit of money because you can say right i'm not going to bother fertilizing this field i'm instead this year going to grow soybeans on the field which is a crop that adds nitrogen to the soil and then next year after i've harvested the sun fit uh, soybeans then I'll plant the crop because I'll have raised the um, I'll have raised the nitrogen value. So some people will actually rotate their crops and make sure they put in um, like plant a soybean type crop in between every harvest, um, like every other harvest, to again reduce the amount of nitrogen that they're actually having to spray on the fields. But 
I am having to do it the, the difficult way, unfortunately. Because I didn't have the luxury of having soybeans planted before this. So these fields have got no fertiliser on them at all. And I'm actually about to run out of fertiliser. Right then, yeah, that means we now have to take the strip to the store. <laughs> we have to go visit the store, buy some fertiliser. Because I don't have any access to any fertiliser and stuff here at the farm. I do not have any refill tanks or anything at this moment in time. But yeah, this is the area I was on about. Um... I don't know if I can mow that or not. If I can't, then what I will probably do is end up coming down with my plow, digging it up, and then seeding growing grass on it to uh, allow me to be able to mow it. <laughs> But also, not only have I got the Global Market mod installed now in the game, which I talked about in the last video, uh, I've also got the updated version of the map. The map was updated on the Mod Hub last week, end of last week. I've got the new version installed. I've not had to start a new game. Woohoo! Which means no progress lost. Just get to enjoy all the wonderful benefits. Yeah, drive into the store, pick up my fertilizer. the map for some fertilizer. As we are getting late into the afternoon now, on this first day of October. So yeah, I figured it was best to do my fields whilst I remembered. Not get too heavily wrapped up in the contract. Um, Just remind me again, how much does my... Three thousand two hundred. Not a lot, is it? And the problem with 3,200 is that that is such an odd amount. Four thousand would have been better because that's a nice even number of bags or pallets that I would need to buy. You know, I would use a whole. I would cons fully consume a pallet or a bag. I don't like leaving partial bags or pallets anywhere. So. I sacrifice seven percent of my actual fertilizer capacity by um, making sure I've got 
I don't leave any pallets because I've got nowhere transporting the pallet, the bags back to the farm. So even that extra 200 litres of leftover would have to sit there because I can't carry it back with me. Um, but I'm going to have to look into a way. We need to find a little way of transporting goods. Um, and again, I do. I did install a new mod today, actually. Uh, where is it? The MB Sprinter. You can have an electric version, or you can have a obviously petrol diesel version. But yeah, it comes with the auto load specialization function. Um, which is nice, wheel brand, have it with as much as 184 horsepower. Nice continental tyres. Or oh, a load, Euro pallets, eight, big bag pallets, two, big bags, three, Euro pallets overloaded, six, umbilical hose, one, Euro pallets with double length, two, barrel pallet, four. Large wood pallets two, doghouse pallet three, metal pallets four. So yeah, one of those would be nice, but again, they're so expensive. Everything's so expensive at the minute. It just seems everything just seems completely out of reach for me and unobtainable on this map, given finances, but you know. So why we start these adventures, ladies and gents, to show that we can achieve a measure of success. You know, we can make farming pay. Yeah, hopefully we get to finish this field. It'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? And then like I say, then we're freed up to do some contracts then. A oh, note. I've got wheat. Okay, I know I've got wheat harvested. I'm therefore thinking to myself that maybe I should be getting some chickens in at the farm now. But at least we've got egg production going on. So you can always sell eggs and always make a little bit of money from egg sales. So back to my field, find where I left off, which was somewhere around about here -ish. And the good thing is, I can't over-fertilise because the machine read is reading the nitrogen values. It knows I've added nitrogen to the um, that bit of the crop, so it won't actually turn on the fertiliser spreader until it reaches the part where it hasn't fertilised. And I can't do anything about that whilst it's in automatic mode. But yeah, we need a lot of uh, fertiliser on this bit, look. Top left. Wow! So much. We might end up having to go back to the shop again for another three bags. Because we're going to burn through this ever so quick. I can smell popcorn. Someone's eating my popcorn. Someone's microwave them. I can smell it. 
sweet and salty popcorn. <laughs> Smell just wafting up the stairs and downstairs. Straight down the hallway. Straight up the staircase. Mmm, popcorn. Know what I'm having for lunch today then. And there we go. So we'll get through this field hopefully pretty quick. Like I say, I'm going to run out of fertilizer again. <clears throat> this field was really bad then for nitrogen content. Right, I need to go and get some more fertilizer, ladies and gent. I'll be back and I'll have this field finished when you come back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have just finished the fertilizer application on the field. It's all good. We have reached 200 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare, the required amount for wheat on loamy soil. So, if we come into our menu now, and we go and have a look at our field, you can see field 53 is good, 56 is good, 57 is good. I do need to go and do field 54 as well, which is the grass field. But, uh, as you can see... Uh, environmental score... It's moved, shifted up slightly. We are at 55 now for the farm. Um, which is quite nice. So, yes, yeah, so we go do the grass field now. Make sure we tap into all of that. Put out. We need to do it before daylight runs out, though. That's the thing, because my crop sensors are solar powered. <laughs> um. So, yeah, we need to make sure we fertilise the grass field. Because grass needs fertiliser too. Especially if we want to reach maximum grass yield. I'm just going to come through here. And there's all my bales. Nicely racked. I did have the one oddball bale. I think I showed you that. Um, in the video. Um, don't need a lot of nitrogen for, um, grass fields but still better to have it than to not have it isn't it
I imagine at some point the crop sensor thing's going to kick off and it's going to say, hey, you need to be sunlight. Crop sensors to work, you need to have sunlight. And I'm going to be like, no, we don't have sun in the UK. <laughs> Which is why the active sensor might have been a better option for me, because at least then I could switch it between the trucks, tractors, and not have to invest on every single one. Again, in hindsight, now looking back, that's the decision I would have made just to have bought one active sensor that I can use with either tractor rather than buying passive sensors for all of my uh, little machines. Would have saved me money for one thing. Same with fitting these with GPS, really. Fitting these machines with GPS was a bit of an expense. I'm perhaps never going to uh, get back. Right, we have finished fertilising our fields. Turn that off. I want to get a nice screenshot. That'll do. Zoom in a bit. Turn sideways a bit print screen it there we go screenshot for today's episode has been taken and captured we'll have a quick look at the bales while we're here to see how fermenting has gone it is going mm, 62% fermented 63% not bad not bad at all like I say, we'll be able to get those collected up and sold fairly soon. Right then, ladies and gents, I guess we've finished the first day of October here on the map. Because um, it is going to get very dark very quickly, I believe. So, I will move forward. I will go and have a night's sleep. We'll come back on the 2nd of October. And then we'll uh, go and have a look at what contracts we can do. Um, I'm probably going to look at contracts that don't require me to use things like seed or fertilizer. Because <laughs> those contracts are going to be very expensive for me to do. And the profit margin is not going to be there. I do not want to be buying product. That comes out of my profit. So, I'll just park that there for now, and I will go, have a good night's sleep, and I will see you all in the next video very soon. Thank you for watching today's video, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Seawaddy. This has been Court Farms. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I will see you next week, I guess, with another round of the uh, Court Farms Let's Play. So for now from me, cheerio.